Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the best classes in D&D, the Monk. Oh, the Monk. How I love thee, how you frustrate me. <laughs> Monks are one of the trickiest classes to play because they just struggle to keep up with the rest. They're such a cool archetype, the martial artist but they have a hard time keeping up with the damage and the defense and the utility. They just feel a little half-assed in most things that they do. I've done a whole video about how monks can struggle, but we're not talking about the core monk today. We're actually talking about a feature in the game, feats. Feats are an optional rule. Whenever a character hits levels 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19, they get to increase their ability scores by a plus two, or a plus one to two different ones. Or they can choose instead, in a game where the DM allows this, but most games the DMs do this, taking feats, powerful abilities that boost you in other ways, giving you new abilities. And the monk is no different, but the thing about the monk is that most of their things that they do, their attacking, their defense, everything else, relies on their stats. They lean heavy into their wisdom and their dexterity, almost more so than any other class in the game do they require these stats to be high, just to make them competitive. This can mean that monks don't get to choose very many feats when they are leveling up. Most of their ASIs are going to ability scores. So, if they're going to take a feat, it has to matter. I have prepared a top five list of feats I think all monks should consider. I think players who are playing monks should genuinely consider doing one of those things that makes their uh, gives them a free feat, either taking Varian Human or the Custom Lineage Race letting them get an extra feat and grabbing one of these powerful abilities at the beginning of the game. That way you can focus your ASIs more on as you level up. But anyway, before we get into the list, I'm going to let you know that Relax Fantasy Review has memberships for just a dollar a month. You can support me here on YouTube. There's a join button below the video down there somewhere. You click that, you get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting folks know that you support the channel, and you'll earn my undying gratitude. Either way, thank you so much for watching the channel, for supporting the videos, and for enjoying the content. So, what do monks want? Well, monks are melee fighters. They are martial artists that love to get in and attack with their hands. So, Let's see if we can't make them a little more slippery by giving them possibly the best feat in all of the game for monks, Mobile. Mobile does three things. First of all, it grants you a plus 10 to your movement speed. So, monks already get boosts to their movement speed. This just cranks that up even more. But it also does something else. It does two more things, actually. When you use the dash action, and this includes when you use Step of the Wind to dash as a bonus action, you can move across difficult terrain without it slowing you down. So that's really nice for maneuverability purposes. And finally, when you attack a creature with a melee attack, you then can move away from that creature without provoking opportunity attacks. Because monks are effectively hit-and-run fighters. They are brawlers that get in, like to hit a bunch of times, and move away. They're not tanky or tough, so they like to be able to not get hit as much as possible. And being able to hit and run, very powerful. This means that you can run in, hit as much as you can, and you won't have to use your step of the wind to disengage. You can just move away. This saves your key points, and allows you to attack more. So this is a must-have for pretty much any monk. But there are other options. There's another one that I'd recommend that monks consider right away if they get a feat at level 1 or at their level 4 feat, and that is Fighting Initiate. Fighting Initiate allows you to take a fighting style from the fighter list. The fighting styles boost all sorts of things giving you better pluses to hit, letting you reroll damage dice, 
giving you a plus to your defense. But the reason I love Fighting Initiate for a monk is because of the unarmed fighting style. See, monks already get a boost to their unarmed attacks, to their fists, or their feet, or their head, or whatever you're imagining when you're hitting somebody with your body. They start off, instead of being a one damage attack, plus your strength or dexterity modifier, that's what a normal unarmed strike would be, monks can get a d4 for their unarmed strikes. This scales over time, but the unarmed fighting style says that if you aren't wielding a weapon or a shield or anything else and you're just fighting with your bare hands, you can unarmed strike for a d8 of damage straight away from level 1, or whenever you get this feature. So take Fighting Initiate, grab the Unarmed Fighting Style, and all of a sudden, your monk strikes are hitting for a d8 instead of a d4. This would normally scale all the way up at level 11, meaning that for the first 10 levels of the game, you are hitting harder than any other monk which is huge, and it doesn't take any key, it's just a feat choice. And the greatest thing about Fighting Initiate is that when you hit other ASI or feat choices, so once your unarmed strikes scale to a D8 at level 11 anyway, you can change this. Fighting Initiate allows you to do that. Take the interception fighting style, or the protection fighting style, or just the defense fighting style to give you a buff to uh, your armor class. There's a lot of options here, and the simple fact that Fighting Initiate gives you more damage early on, making you a machine gun puncher, is just solid in my opinion. But monks still have the issue of being not that tanky. Their armor class is based on either their wisdom and dexterity modifiers, meaning that even if you get a really good stat for those, 16 and both at the beginning of the game, or a, a plus 3 rather, then you have a 16 armor class. 10 plus 3 plus 3. And monks aren't proficient in armor, and even if you pick a race that is, that limits them in what their martial arts can do. So you really are going to get hit unless you maneuver really smartly and get lucky. You're going to get hit a lot. And monks only have a d8 hit die. Why it's not a d10, I have no idea. But it's a d8, so they aren't very tough. And because they're so focused on their wisdom and dexterity, they don't have much left over for constitution. Monks are pretty glass cannony. Unless you give them the tough feat. A tough feat is a feat that can be taken any time in the game, and it's just as good. Basically, the tough feat increases your hit points by two for every level you are. And it continues to do so throughout your career. So if you take this at level one, you get an extra two hit points. And then you get another two hit points at level two, and another at level three. Or if you take it at level four, then you just get eight hit points straight away. And then another two at level five, and so on. This means that you are going to be getting the equivalent, as far as hit points go, of a plus four to your constitution without actually spending the ASI to do it. This means that you don't have to worry as much about your constitution, and you still are going to have plenty of hit points to go around. This is important for monks, as they are going to be taking damage, if they're, if they're playing right, and... Their hit points need that boost. This makes your monk far tougher, hence the name of the feat. So, we've got maneuverability, we've got more damage, we've got more toughness. What else can we do? Well, what can't monks do? Monks are one of four classes in the game that do not inherently get magic. They do not have spellcasting, naturally. Therefore... If you want your monk to have a bit more utility and a bit more ability to use magic, I suggest the Ritual Caster feat. Ritual Caster gives you a book of ritual spells. You get to have two when you take the feat, and uh, as you go up in the game, you can learn more ritual spells from Caster's lists as you go on. Now, why is this important for a monk? Well, a monk 
does not have any natural way to generate advantage on their attacks. It's just not a thing that they have. But if they take the Ritual Caster feat, they can learn Find Familiar, a wizard spell. And if you're going to take Ritual Caster, by the way, I highly recommend that you use the Wizards book because you have to choose a class for your Ritual book because the wizard spell list is massive and there's loads of spells on it. And Find Familiar is one of them. You can then Ritual Cast Find Familiar, get yourself an animal pet. This animal, especially if it's a flying creature with the fly-by trait, can fly in and give you the help action, generating advantage on your attacks. It also can follow your commands, like any good pet can. Throwing switches, dropping things, picking things up. Maybe even, if your DM's generous, administering healing potions to your friends, or to you if you go unconscious. There's a lot of things familiars can do. And then there's other ritual spells from the wizard list that's helpful. Detect Magic's on there, Identify is on there. Some of the more niche ones, like Purify Food and Drink, or Detect Poison and Disease. There's loads of interesting utility spells that you're not going to use when you fight, but you can use them outside of combat. This takes the monk, who is so primarily focused on combat effectiveness, and gives them something else to do. And that's really good. It's something that helps balance them out and grants one of the few people who can't use magic a little modicum of magical power. So, solid pick, I say. And then finally, one of the more recent feats in the game from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, I give you the Crusher feat. The Crusher feat is specific to creatures that do bludgeoning damage like people who punch or kick, because it turns out unarmed strikes do bludgeoning damage. The feat grants you a plus one to your constitution, so that shores up a little bit of defensive issues, and it allows you to move enemies once per turn when you hit them with a bludgeoning attack. There is no saving throw for this, there's just a restriction. You have to hit them with bludgeoning damage, which is no problem for a monk, and they have to be no more than one size larger than you. So you can't do this on huge creatures or gargantuan creatures, but if it's large or smaller, which a good portion of the enemies in the game are, just punch or kick them and you can forcibly move them five feet, I would assume, away from you. If you didn't take the mobile feet, this is one way that you could attack an enemy, push them away, and move away from them without provoking opportunity attacks. Or just, you know, kick them off a cliff? This is a real, this is a Spartan kick moment, if I've ever seen one. And then there's one other feature that Crusher gives you, that when you crit on an enemy, all attacks against that enemy have advantage until your next turn, setting both you up to hit them with some flurry of blows attacks, or your enemies to gain advantage against them. It's kind of like a miniature stun, I guess, that you hit someone with a bludgeoning attack so hard that it dazes them. Except all it does is grant attacks against them advantage. But that's nothing to sneeze at. So the Crusher feat makes the monk not just have a better defense, but also grants them battlefield control. The ability to move enemies grants advantage on occasion. It's a great power and something that I think any monk should consider if they want to be able to not just move themselves, but move their enemies, which is really strong in D&D. Forced movement is real powerful. All in all, you're not going to get all of these feats on a monk. You need to boost your dex, you need to boost your wisdom, you want your key points to work, you want your stunning strikes to work, and you want to hit with all those attacks. But when you do have the chance, such as taking custom lineage at the beginning of the game, or on that one occasion when you've got your dex and wisdom to 20 and you've got to take a feat in the late game, consider tough, consider mobile, consider crusher, or even ritual caster. These are all great feats that any monk should consider as they move through their career. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the join button down there, and keep your eyes peeled for more feet reviews coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.